Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan uh-huh, And if uh-huh. your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand <laughs> Sports, gossip, all the hot topics hey, hey. RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, uh, they got uh, the hottest bloggers Did Jeremy Lin hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first mm. I'm talking about the latest, yeah, I'm yeah. talking about the greatest yeah, yeah. Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell him Bobby sent ya. From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified co-sign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk. Dot com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Dot com. Real fans, real talk. Dot com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. RealFansRealTalk.com RealFansRealTalk.com Oh man, what's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. We got a whole lot to get into on this week's show. NBA, uh, the, the, the conference finals are in full effect. We got a couple of injuries in the, in the world of baseball that's going to affect the, the Yankees this season. More injuries? More injuries. I mean, we're still doing good to have all the absolutely. injuries that, that we got. Oh, absolutely. But, yeah, but we lost somebody for the season, but we'll get into that a little bit later today. We actually kind of went viral twice in the same week. You know, big things happen around here. It, like it did, it's right? like a big deal around we here. We are, though. That's like what's crazy. Deal. You know, we're going we to talk about that with our, with, with our Emerald in just a minute. But, you know, let me introduce my co-host first before we get started. Legend in two games, what's going on, man? Yeah, yeah, man. Thursday night, um, definitely got to pay, pay tribute to a legend. Um, shout out to a lot of just groundbreaking news that's going on around here. Mm-hmm. And got some boxing to talk about. Yeah. A possible homicide that might take place. Um, yeah. Just, 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 <laughs> before we get to that, though. Yeah, you know, okay. I, we don't want to make light. You know, let's, you yeah. know. Yeah, you know. Well, nah, but, you know, on, on, on a more serious note. Absolutely. Um, you know, we lost a member of the boxing world. We lost a member of the Real Fans Real Talk family. Uh, we lost a member of our Ring 10 New York family. Uh, the, the, the great, the great, great, great Harold Letterman. He uh, passed away. He had been uh, fighting his battle with cancer for some time now. And uh, he lost that battle uh, not so, a couple of days ago. And um, so we, we, we got to pay a little bit of, excuse me, we got to pay a lot of homage to, to someone that was a, a judge, an analyst. Uh, you know, he, he, was, he was in the community doing work. He was really making a difference uh, in, in the world of boxing. Um, he's been on Real Fans Real Talk a couple of times. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's fam right there. We had to, at the, at the Ring to New York Christmas parties, chopping it up with Harold Letterman, like such a great dude. And someone who has seen boxing, you know, everybody come, come and go in the sport of boxing over the past 40, 50 years. You know, so we got to pay our homage. And, and if you guys don't know, if you watch HBO Boxing right. and you see the, the, that Letterman scorecard that comes on, that's in honor of the late, great Harold Letterman right there. So anytime you watch the fight on HBO, you saw that Letterman card uh, up there on the screen. That was because of the work that that man put in in the boxing community. Well, a true innovator as well, because obviously HBO is where it started. But every other telecast of any type of boxing mm-hmm. uh, fight, took that same prop yep um and they would bring in their own quote unquote expert analyst um scoring judge to critique the fight and, and give their their own judgment on who they thought won the round and that all started with letterman, letterman. Mm-hmm. so everyone who sits at home and critiques a fight the same way i do the same way you do yeah you know we got to take our hats off to harold letterman because he was the first one to do it that's a, that's definitely a fact um we got a couple of videos for harold letterman that we're going to play we're going to just you know, just so you guys can get a, a, a small look into uh, the things that Harold Letterman was able to accomplish over his career, we're gonna let you see that. We're also gonna let you see uh, the first interview that Harold Letterman did with Real Fans Real Talk. It was at the uh, Rington New York Charity Dinner. I think that was the that was actually the first one that we went to, and uh, this was uh, this was like maybe like a year and a half before uh, Mayweather Pacquiao went down, and uh, Statman got the chance to chop it up with him. Um, during that, so we're gonna play that a little bit later in the program as well. Um, I was actually fortunate enough 
uh, because you know we we work with Ring Ten so so much um, over the past gotta be what, five years now. We've been working with Ring Ten uh, New York, and um, so you know getting really close with the with the guys in the charity organization. I'm actually working on my next documentary right now, so I actually have some uh, uh, some unreleased footage with uh, Harold Letterman where he's just talking about everything in the sport of boxing. You know just who's who and and what you know so. I'm actually, you know, this it, it sucks that this happened right now, but you know, I'm gonna do him justice when I when I actually finish up the documentary, and you know, we're gonna dedicate it to Harold Letterman, you know, at this point now. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, Cliff, when you guys are ready in the back, let us know. We could drop that that first highlight video. We gotta pay that man his homage. Y'all, y'all, man, y'all tip your hat for the legend, Harold Letterman, Hall of Famer, as a matter of fact. Too. Let's not forget that. Absolutely. Boxing has always been a world defined by its characters. They make the sport different from all the others. More colorful, more indelible, more personal, and more fun. Harold Letterman was one such boxing character. A man who loved the fight game just as much as it loved him back. Born in the Bronx in 1940, Harold was first introduced to boxing early in his life. My father was a huge fight fan. He really loved boxing. My father and his friends would go to the fights every Friday night, and they used to throw me in the car and take me to the fights with them. That's where I started loving boxing. He had no interest in fighting himself, but in 1967, he was certified as a New York State boxing judge. And over the next several decades, Harold would judge nearly 400 fights, including some of the sport's most memorable bouts. Perhaps none more memorable than the third matchup between Muhammad Ali and Ken Norton at Yankee Stadium. Then in 1986, HBO Boxing decided to add a working judge to its commentary team. And after an audition, Harold was deemed the perfect fit. You, you try not to prejudge a fight, and, and you try not to postjudge a fight. You really don't think what's going to happen in the later rounds. You're just watching the fight and scoring it as you see it. So on March 22, 1986, Harold Letterman made his national television debut. Well, we're going to get a judge's eye look tonight, a special feature here on HBO. We've invited Harold Letterman, who is one of the top judges in the business, just to get an unofficial but a very known perspective on how the fight is progressing. From the very start, he was a hit. Larry, as I see it, Trevor Burbank is ahead 106 to 103. He's the aggressor. He's landing the stronger, harder punches, doing what he has to do. You might not often have seen him on camera, but the voice and the unvarying beginning of every slice of analysis became part of the soundtrack of modern boxing history. Harold, how do you have it through nine? <laughs> okay, Jim, okay, Jim. Jim, I gotta tell you, Jim, I gotta tell you. Okay, Jim, thank you. Seven rounds to two, Gennady Golovkin. You know, Jim, I love that effective aggressive this man. I love it when a guy backs the other guy up the whole fight. That's what Gennady's doing. He had an encyclopedic knowledge of the sport that made him television's preeminent ringside rules expert. Another low blow. Zeb should definitely take the five minutes. After five minutes, if Zeb Judah can't continue, he loses by abandonment. If that beard can cushion a punch, or if the beard can scratch the opponent, it's illegal. And when the biggest controversies and memories cropped up, Harold was always there with perspective, reason, and explanation. Unbelievable! Richard Steele stopped the fight with fewer than five seconds to go. The last round is the only round that you can be saved by the bell. Had the judges had Taylor ahead on the scorecards, as we did, Taylor would have won the decision. Very interesting. Galata has lost the second point, and Harold, what comes next? The thing that comes next, without question, is a disqualification. Manny Pacquiao was the aggressive all night. He set him up, and then he belted him with the left hand. I mean, that decision was a crime. Without question, Manny Pacquiao won the fight. In his life away from the ring, he was a pharmacist, a loving husband to Eileen, a loving father to Julie and Iris. But ultimately, wherever you saw him, his passion for boxing enveloped him. Just things that we picked up around the world over the years, a uh, few old posters here and there. I save stuff like press kits and, you know, bout sheets and whatnot. I guess I'm one of the few people that's got score sheets from the Puerto Rican Commission. <laughs> it was that passion, that joy for everything to do with the sport, that led him to a dream come true in 2016. Induction into the International Boxing Hall of Fame. 
an honor he'd treasure for the rest of his life. So while maybe Harold Letterman never threw a punch or worked a corner in his 79 years on Earth, he became one of the great characters in all of boxing. Oh, man, boxing's everything to me. I like the sport, I love the people in it, and uh, it's just been my whole life. He loved the sport as much as life itself, and he loved everything boxing gave him in return. To tell you the truth, I really, really never thought when I started judging boxing that it would go beyond judging. I guess, you know, I really lucked out. Couldn't ask for any more. Yeah, man, welcome back. If you're just joining us live, Real Fans, Real Talk, Emerald Maria is in the building. Legend in Two Games is in the hey. building. And uh, we're we, we paying that, uh, that homage, man, to the late, great Harold Letterman, one of the icons in the sport of boxing. Just a genuine, genuine uh, brother. Again, shout out to the entire uh, Ring 10 New York organization. I was with those guys on uh, Tuesday, um, just talking about their next moves and whatnot. And uh, Harold, who was actually on the board uh, of Ranks in New York, you know, it, it just a, just a dope individual. So just being able to be in the presence of somebody of that stature and, and as respected as he is in the sport of boxing and just being on some, hey, what's up, Harold? And, you know, what's the man, how you been? How's the family and whatnot? And we just get to chop it up like that. And, uh, you know, when I, when I asked him to be a part of the documentary, you know, no hesitation. All right, come on down, come to the meeting. We'll shoot it right before everybody comes in. So I was able to sit with him for like an hour and a half and uh, just, just talk boxing with him. And it was just an amazing experience. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm even more hyped about putting everything together for this documentary, you know, for, for the late, great Harold Letterman. Um, we're going to actually, before we, before we jump into to all of the sports stuff, we're just going to really quick, uh, the Statman uh, had a chance to chop it up with uh, Harold Letterman at the Marino Del Rey in the Bronx during uh, the uh, Ranks in New York uh, gala. Um, it was about three, four years ago. I forget the exact date. You know, we, we've been doing so much this past week, you know, all throughout the Internet world. But uh, we're going to play that video real quick. When we come back, we got a whole lot of sports to get into. Right. Y'all let us know, man. Whenever y'all ready in the back, we're going to rock out with it. All right, Harold Letterman. There we go right there. And Statman. Hello, everyone. Right I'm Mark the Statman Skevich. I'm here with the legendary Harold Letterman, also known as the Letterman Card on HBO Boxing. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, a lot of people don't know this is also an Ivy League graduate of Columbia. He got his, uh, he got his license to, f f to judge title fights right after he graduated in 67. Uh, ended his j judging career in 99 and still works with HBO Boxing. What, Howard, I have to ask you, what made you decide to, to stop judging fights? I stopped, actually stopped in 2001. Um, you know, we were getting a lot of controversy because I would score a fight for a guy who would uh, later appear on HBO and, you know, there was just too much conflict of interest. So HBO asked me to stop judging and uh, my daughter judges, so that's fine. I'm just working for HBO and there's no conflict with anybody. You mentioned your daughter, Julie, who judges as well, and I was wondering, the, do you guys usually see the fight the same way sometimes, or most of the time? Or I, I would say most of the time. We go over a lot of fights together, you know, so we can uh, get some ideas about how we're thinking, and, uh, you know, I try to teach her as much as I can. You also talked about the controversies with boxing and judges. Do you feel that the judges still feel the same way? Uh, is it the same as it was before? Is it worse as far as the sport of boxing is right now? I think boxing right now is being judged very, very well, you know, on a professional level. The only thing I'd like to see is, is that these commissions knuckle down a little bit, use their brains, and when you get a high-profile fight, just pick the three best judges you can find. Forget about where they live. Forget about what sanctioning body they belong to. Pick the three best judges, period. In other words, if a fight comes along in, in Las Vegas because the casinos are putting up the most money for a high-profile fight, whether it's Pacquiao against Floyd Mayweather or whoever, uh, pick three judges that you know are really outstanding judges. Let's say Julie Letterman from New York, Joe Pasquale from New Jersey, Max Luca from California, uh, you know, uh, Michael Pernick from Florida. Pick the best judges. Forget about where they live. Nevada's uh, real starchy about this thing. They're always using Nevada judges because they want to get Nevada, uh, you know, uh, they want to keep the money in Nevada. 
make sure that their judges get the most money, and it's not fair. Their judges are screwing up. They should get the best judges you can find for high-profile fights, regardless of where they live. Just pick the best. Well, that definitely makes sense because you do want to call the fight right. Um, a recent fight, the Pacquiao-Bradley fight, you had it scored 119 to 109. Do you feel that Pacquiao got robbed in that fight? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, uh, Manny kept nailing him with that left hand. I mean, you couldn't miss it. He just whacking him constantly, definitely doing more damage. Bradley had a sprained ankle. He couldn't set his feet to punch, for God's sake. Uh, Bradley's head was getting popped back all the time. Manny Pacquiao, I, I never saw one point in that fight where I could honestly say he was hurt. Not even once. If the fight were to happen, Pacquiao versus Mayweather, who do you think would win? Uh, I never predict fights that I might have to keep scoring. So, you know, I, I'm not partial to one guy or another. It, it would be a great fight, though. Southpaw against the right-handed guy. Power puncher in Pacquiao against the speed guy in Mayweather. It's a great fight. Do you think the fight will ever happen? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Early 2013, I'd say. Yep. Great. Also, Hall of Fame Boxing, Howard Letterman from HBO Boxing. It was a pleasure to have you on the show. All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. That was a piece of history right there. Uh, real fans, real talk. We made a little bit of, uh, you know, of some history this week as well. We did. Uh, we were doing some things. Right? We did. We oh, was doing yeah. some things. I think, you know what? Because I, I, I want to, you know, I want to brighten things up. You know, brighten the mood up a little right. bit. Let's, let's, uh, let's prep things up. Let's get it going. Yeah, we, we <laughs> told you. We going. told you guys uh, last week. You know, we, we was we was running yeah. to the station last week because we was up the block at the uh, red carpet uh, premiere for John Wick Three with uh, Keanu okay, Reeves and. Uh, Holly Berry, that fine Holly Berry. Holly Berry. And um, Holly Berry. little did, did we know at that point yeah. that we would have been a part of history. Yeah. Uh, major a, history. A, a, a major viral moment uh, yeah. between Emerald Marie and uh, Holly Berry. And, uh, <laughs> and, Shot and, by you. You know, I, you I was out there. I was in them. I be in them streets, man. I'm telling you, I be I mean, in them streets. People don't know, though. You, you guys have done several red carpets. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I had some several great interviews. Yeah. Like before, um, you know, certain movies have come out. We don't want to mm -hmm. give free advertisement to show, you know. Yeah. Shout out so to the sponsor the that's going to re remain nameless to the names <laughs> on the check. Yeah. But listen, you know, no, it's, it's yeah. been some big time movies mm -hmm. and timing is everything. You know, you guys yeah. get John Wick 3, mm -hmm. Holly Berry. Mm -hmm. um, shortly after that, another uh, well recognized blogger and writer, Jason Lee, was on Breakfast Club. Yeah. And he actually expressed some of the same sentiments that you told us about personally. He did. Some of the mm -hmm. things you experienced. M, take it over. Like, let us know. Like, let us know what it's really like. Yeah. For people that don't understand. So, basically, just to kind of, I know last week, uh, for those of you who watch, we just got fresh off the carpet and we explained what happened. Um, basically, we had a, a really crazy moment with Holly Berry. Um, I just, you know, was at the red carpet. Basically, myself and Lamar were the only other... Uh, reporters of color, color there, and oftentimes as a black um, reporter, you're definitely placed not in the best position that's conducive to get an interview. Um, so being more towards the end, it's really difficult to get the content that you need. So um, her PR agent, or I don't, I don't want to say actually it was her PR agent, whoever was coordinating the carpet, basically said, "Hey, we don't have time for you guys." So they started to walk away. Um, I actually something that isn't um, heard in the video, I basically yelled, Holly, I wanted to talk to you about the black pageant winners that won and made history like you did. So she turned around, she spotted myself and Lamar and immediately was like, I'm not gonna skip the only brother or sister on the carpet. So that was a huge moment for me because she literally did not turn her back on us. And for her to you know, walk up to us and give us the interview that we needed and to recognize that black press matters, um, you know, was just incredible. And I've just been all about this movement today, I Matter in Media, and um, it was a crazy moment. So I actually thought it was kind of in my head as far as black people being at the end of the carpet. I didn't know if it was my experience the last couple of times, but when I seen Jason Lee from Hollywood Unlocked interviewing on The Breakfast Club, I'm like, wait, I feel the same way. Like, this is a thing. Yeah. So after um, I actually came here, I was in the back filming that little video, where I was just pouring my heart out and I was saying, I'm frustrated, like, as a black woman, as a black person, you know, we're gonna continue to be seen and heard. 
Um, so when I watched Jason Lee's video, it just confirmed that it's an issue. Yeah. And all day, I mean, there's just been an outpour from reporters around the world saying, um, speaking on their experiences. So. And it's crazy because literally, as I'm watching the interview myself, and then it was like around the time it first came out, and immediately I get on the phone, I'm like, yo, Emerald, you need to watch this video. This is right. crazy. Yeah. I, yo, he's li like, because it's literally like every red carpet that we do, we in the, I mean, it was one, I felt like we was in like a freaking underground show. To hide, <laughs> like there was no light, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, we was in a bomb yeah. shelter or something. We were so far back, the footage is all dark and what. I'm like, yo, what, what's going on? And then the quality's terrible, right? Because you're in a dark spot, yeah. you're not in position to get anything good. And then, like, you know, ET or E News is smack in the middle, and it's just no coincidence that no one's of color at the beginning of the carpet. Yeah, but we've, you know, shout out to us for fighting through all of those things and still, mm -hmm. you know, pressing forward and getting our content, but. I just encourage everyone, no matter what industry you're in, to continue to push the envelope and fight through it. So shout out to Holly Berry, wow. Jason Lee, Baller Alert, Shade Room need to get on it. Um. Uh, y'all playing? Y'all yeah. better stop playing. Definitely a yeah, big week, so. man. Congratulations to you on that. And, and all sure. my, all of my, all of my, um, you know, videographer peoples too. Y'all better stop playing too, and, and, and y'all better go full throttle because the same way, you know, the media outlets, the people in front of the camera, they be slim to none when it comes to minorities. You don't be no minority camera people up there either. So yeah, and it ain't just at the red carpets. You know what I'm saying? Like I didn't been to you know, shoots with, with ESPN and, and different places like that, and you get out there on the field, and it'd be me yeah. and a bunch of middle-aged white men on the camera, and I'm looking around like, I feel good, because, you know, I'm here, but then I feel bad, because it's right. just me here. It's a right. feeling of, like, isolation. Like, it just, you feel like you belong, and you're worthy, and you're qualified to be there, but then you almost look around, and no one looks like you. Yeah, and it's like nobody else is worthy? Yeah, and it's like <laughs> representation so important, and what's mind-boggling is the talent walking down the carpet looks like you, so it's yeah. like, let me celebrate my culture. Like, I'm a black woman who, she paved the way for me, so mm -hmm. you're, not take, you're not robbing me of this moment of a black woman that was the first to, you know, win an Oscar and yeah. and win pageants and all these things. Like that was my moment. So when she was walking mm -hmm. away, I'm like, this is my culture right. that I'm celebrating. So I think, you know, more celebrities just have to be cognizant of black press when they are passing them by. Yeah. Um, I don't know if we're gonna show Jamel Hill who is, I am a huge fan of. Shout out of. to Jamal Hill. Yeah, she's We're she, all absolutely. huge fans. We're all fans of we, all, we always talk about her, right. her here on the show. Um, she tweeted about the, the situation, um, and it was just, to see those tweets made me <laughs> yeah. really happy. So shout out yeah. to her. It's, a, it's, a, it's always a, a good feeling, you know, when, when people let you watch, yeah. you know, and they, they just recognize, you know, what's going on with you and they respond to that. Mm. That's, a, that's a dope feeling, man. Shout out to Jamel Hill because, yeah. you know, she's been through a lot and she's done a lot, you know, mm -hmm. in sports and she's one of the best out. So that, that's that's dope. And, you know, amongst everybody else that, uh, yeah. you know, hitting you up. I mean, it's just, it's, it's amazing. You know, hopefully the red carpets get a little more comfortable for us. Listen, I feel like <laughs> now forward. I might walk in and have they some They're going to know you. Wait, wait, wait. That's Emerald? Nah. I know. Could you move things this glove? Right. I'm going to need you to move that glove right No, no, move that glove. Things, things is different. Yeah, it's, think, it's, yeah listen, it's Emerald. All right. When I Your was, team good? <laughs> All, right. All right, cool. When I was contemplating on posting it, my uncle said um, the squeaky wheel gets the oil and to speak on it. And um, I do have to say this real quick. I know I'm going in about this, but um, I had spoke to uh, the CEO of Sony today. She DM'd me and so did Ebony Magazine. And I was saying in the, in the um, DM, they were like, we're so proud of the way you, you, know, you expressed it. You didn't, you weren't angry, et cetera. And I said, I actually was scared to put this out because I kept thinking, I'm not a huge reporter. What if I get blackballed? What if I get negative um, feedback and I don't get invited back? Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I would be devastated. I love covering movie premieres. And both Ebony Mag Magazine and, oh, I forget her name, the woman from Sony, um, she literally said to me in the DM, don't be afraid, you know, use your voice. And if you if you can't get into something, you call me yeah. and we'll take care Maybe of you. That. So all the black women that reached out to me today saying like, don't be afraid, and that, you know, we'll make sure that you have a seat at the table. I was like, this is, like, overwhelming today. Like, this is crazy. Oh, so, this, shout this, out to Nam. <laughs> that's what it is. It definitely, you know, just, man, this is a dope experience. Yeah. I'm like, you know, just being a part of this. Because it's, like, it was crazy because... 
people were, like literally as we're on the air right now, my boy just hit me up and he posted the the, the um I think it was on Metro. Metro and he's like, yeah, you know, I sent it to you because I seen you had posted the pictures that look just like this. I was like, yeah, that's my footage. He like lost his mind. Like, Metro it, it, um, News One posted it. Madame Noir yeah. posted it. Baller Alert had a whole conversation with me and um, Hollywood a lot. Shout out to them. Wanna, wants to fly me out to LA to be on the show. Um, and I'm I'm just like. What? Listen, wow. man. You better, me. Y'all better recognize. Come, y'all better recognize <laughs> what we crazy. bringing, y'all. I mean, we just changing. You know, we just trying to step our game up and keep more moving my whole team to the next level. <laughs> better, y'all better know it. <laughs> you know what I'm we, we out here, man. You know, but it was just definitely a dope moment. If you guys haven't already, and, and also check out the interviews too, because you did, you did get some interviews. I, you know, Watch I, the interviews I, first. I didn't even Watch get the to post first. the interviews because yeah. I've been dealing with everything else. But um, man, just just a testament of hard work, and I appreciate you guys for always giving me the platform here and you know that's where we it's do, only man. up from here so absolutely and, and i'm gonna in turn thank the people that's back there because we can't do nothing without them people that's yeah. behind us so shout out to everybody that's holding it down Could for us behind the cameras yeah. and in the control room uh y'all guys make the real magic happen every week we just up here you know i don't know what we're doing but cliff mm -hmm. but cliff you still owe me though you still owe me an appearance on the show i got the script ready for you just so i ain't let you off the hook brother Okay. Yeah, I got the speech ready for you. I'm just waiting for the perfect time to, you know, put that out. But Cliff, I still love you, bro. But uh, when y'all when y'all get when y'all get ready, um, we're gonna let that video run because the people that haven't seen it, they need to see it. Yeah. I know everybody has seen it already, but they didn't see it with us here on Real Fans Real Talk. <laughs> so y'all, let's watch the video and y'all see, you know, some of the stuff that we be dealing with on those uh, red carpets. Whenever y'all ready in the back, just let us know so uh, we can rock out and uh, check that out. Man, people need to see it, man. Y'all know what it is, man. It's real fans, real talk. Times black reporters and black outlets are pushed to the end and unable to get the proper interview that they need. Well, tonight, Holly Berry interviewed with everybody. Um, as she approached myself and the only, I was the only black woman on the carpet and there was only one black male. As soon as they got in front of Lamar and myself, her PR said that she had no time to speak to us. And they began to walk away. because we're doing group print and they're already starting at the theater and um you know i prepared all day i was super excited who doesn't want to talk to holly berry you know what i mean and she looked at me and she looked at lamar and said no you guys are gonna have me skip i can't skip my brother and my sister and she turned back around and walked right up to us and we interviewed her and i just I feel like, I'm not going to lie, I don't know why I got emotional and I still am, but I take so much pride being black and being one of the only black faces in so many spaces that I'm in. And I just felt like for her to turn around and get- Oh my God, I'm Lamar Dawson. Um, I the opportunity, I have a newfound respect for <laughs> It was hard, you know, I never worked that hard. I just want to encourage every black woman and male to continue to break barriers in all of these industries because our faces will be seen and our voice will be heard. Holly Berry, Holly Berry. Oh no, welcome back guys. Yeah, see what first of all, let me just let me just tell y'all this because you know, you got cameramen out there. Cause that's the number one rule. Them cameras don't stop rolling. Listen. All right? Because the fact footage. that we was able to get that. And you see, yeah. so what I love about being out with Emerald is she don't mind Debo on her way into, into the interview. When that lady first came back and she was like, well, can we at least get a group interview or <laughs> something? Can we get a Snapchat pic? You know? about, I tried to be civil. You did. You did. But you're not about to tell my 5'10 uh, basketball <laughs> longhand arm that I'm about to get this goddamn interview. I am so tall on the carpet and I wear heels and all these little girls was right there and I was like you know what you sometimes you just gotta extend your arm out put that mic in the middle and just no, ease your fact. way that's a fact. I did that with um, Sandra Bullock that day yeah that's <laughs> and you know that's that's a fact you gotta so. love it so uh, but we and we will be back we ain't going nowhere we're gonna be at the yes. next red carpet and the next one after that and the we next will. one after that and we're gonna keep coming back here every Thursday so make sure y'all following us on all our social media platforms mm -hmm. make sure y'all hit that website up realfansrealtalk.com hit us up on Facebook facebook.com forward slash realfansrealtalk twitter instagram at realfansrealtalk 
And make sure y'all subscribe to that YouTube channel. It's youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions, man. Y'all got to subscribe to the channel because that's where you're going to get all the exclusive stuff, man. All the overtime, all the bonus footage, everything that's been going down. You get it right there on that YouTube channel. So subscribe, youtube.com forward slash for the fans productions. And uh, we about to jump into this basketball news in just a second. Yeah. I see we got H2O in the building too. That means Balling for Peace must be coming right. up ASAP. Uh, really quick though, let me just send a quick shout out to uh, to Scoop B, Brandon Robinson. Uh, he, uh, he he just wrote something in uh, on the heavy.com and uh, he referenced the uh, Real Fans Real Talk interview with uh, Anthony Mason yeah. from a couple of years back, which was dope. Um, I'm going to have everything up on the, the Instagram and on the Facebook for you guys. You guys can read the entire article and uh you know just see what, what he used from the, the mason and was dope uh big shout out to scoop b um well we got we got a we got a whole lot going on the the, the eastern conference finals in full effect the western conference yeah, finals yeah. in full effect uh i see my, my main man skyscraper is mm -hmm. in the building first of all i don't even know if he knows this but he's actually in the intro video he might not even know this but he y'all see him every week on the show because he's actually in the intro video mm -hmm. that's me when i'm up there like this on the mic and y'all see the, the <laughs> tallest guy you ever seen in your life that, that, that's shigari right there so big shout out to him and h2o uh in the building they're gonna join us in uh in just a second as a matter of fact kev when you get a chance can you just pull up the website on the screen just so they can see that real fans real talk.com and uh we'll get um shigari and uh haram ready to jump onto the set with us and talk a little bit of uh, Balling for Peace, but not just yet. I'm going to let them in the back handle their business. But before we, we, we do all of that, just really quick, guys, Eastern Conference Finals, both game ones in the book. Uh, we, had a, we had a blowout on one side. Mm -hmm. We had a, a, a great knockdown. A game and a good comeback. Shootout, yeah, in, uh, in Milwaukee. Uh, those guys are, are, oh, man, that's going to be crazy. Yeah. Kawhi and Giannis, but which I which I think, man, is is Bucks Bucks um, taking us? Nah, I still like Toronto to win the series. Um, I think Coach Nurse uh, he kind of sabotaged himself yesterday. He kind of let Mike. he kind of let um, Kawhi kind of you know he, he let him play too many minutes yesterday, pretty much, and that's what happened there. But um, ultimately, I do like Toronto. I like the veteran leadership on their team. Um, they had a good defensive game plan, but they kind of just tied out. But if, if Lowry's going to give them those type of minutes and those type of numbers consistently, they're going to be all right in the series. And I think they, they'll be okay moving forward. They just, you know, they kind of gassed that then. Remember, they came out of a seven-game series. That might be Kyle Lowry's best game ever in the playoffs. Uh, it's definitely his best game one. <laughs> he always struggles game one in the playoffs. Yeah. So for him to, to put, up, put up them type of numbers was definitely his best game one. Yeah. Uh, but I think they're going to be all right, though. Ultimately, I, the game really was, was the way they wanted it to be, mm. the pace of the game. They really clogged the paint. They didn't allow Giannis to control the paint. But you saw towards the end of the third quarter leading into the fourth, Kawhi just gassed. You know, yeah. they kept him on the floor too long, and he just gassed out. And what y'all think about the game that's about to go on that you guys are watching right now on the screen, the uh, warm-ups, Golden State and uh, Portland. Do you think that Portland has a chance, any chance in hell of stealing game two? Uh, they could steal game two, but I, I don't think this series is going more than six games tops. Top. You think six? I think it might be five. I, I think it's going to be over early. <laughs> it might even be a, sweat, a sweep, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, think it's going to be, I think it's going to be over early. Um, it's just not a bad, it's not a good matchup for, for Portland. This is why I really wanted to see Denver against Golden State because yeah. I thought Denver with Millsap and Jokic could create problems for Golden State, do that. especially with Durant being out these yeah. first couple games. But um, Portland's they're going to have to figure out a way. Uh, some of their role guys are going to have to step up bigger. Um, they continue to leave um, Aminu wide open. Yeah. And they know he's not a threat from outside. Um, Seth is going to have to shoot better. Evan Turner is going to have to play better. I thought the matchup with the brothers, I thought it was going to be a little no. bit better than that. No? No. Yeah, I thought. That yeah. Thing, I, think Seth, I thought Seth was going to put up like 25 in game one. The adrenaline alone was going to carry him. <laughs> Stop. I'm sorry, I gotta, I gotta stop. Y'all got, y'all got to stop me when I was just saying stuff like this, y'all. You know, you know I, mean? I know you were reaching. Reaching. I know you I was. I know. I just, I'm trying to try to drama up. I was trying to create a viral moment myself. Listen, 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 you know, he tried that. to just compare the same thing like he got my sister and I right, in trouble. Right, I did. Well, <laughs> the whole sibling thing. First of all, we know the, the parents don't even want to root for Seth. Exactly. They had to flip a coin to see who was going to uh, wear the Portland what? jersey. That's a damn shame. They, they had to flip a coin to see who was going to wear the Portland jersey. Like ah. He should have tried to get get traded to. Uh, uh, I gotta to, wear it to go to state. Then at least maybe he we, we got a ring. I don't think this one's going to happen. They de but they got the double jerseys. They got the Portland on one side and the Golden. Meanwhile, mom's just <laughs> <was> cheering crazy, <laughs> crazy. She was 
stuff with the Portland And Jersey she was trying to hide it, too. Hey, and we talk shit go crazy. Oh, hey, come on. What's up? Yo, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Hey. Listen, no, uh, Seth, he made it to the league, <laughs> and that's that's a major accomplishment. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not knocking his game. But when you're rooting for one brother who's playing on a historically great yeah. team, and you're rooting for another brother whose team is in the first time in the conference finals in, in 18 years, there's no comparison. You're rooting for the brother that's going after history. She did so. the right thing. No, though, but like... you gotta you gotta do that because you don't want him to feel bad because he knows he's he not already on feel a bad. Good team. Normally this time he's sitting in the stands too watching his brother play. Yeah. That's true. So you know, I guess anything, you know, for right. you know, in that in that sense will work out for him. Got the whole family cheering for Steph. He finally he made yeah, it. He, he did, he did. Yeah. He got to play against his brother. I think that's the holiday of his career playing give against. Up three more games, yeah. yeah, and then that's no, but I mean <laughs> he'll still come back next season, he'll still be, you know, a good backup in the league. You know, I think he's pretty good. For that, so well, you know what's missing, guys. We got some actual ballers right here with Big us. Big time ballers in the building. On, on, on the set, a cu- couple of pros actually you know, put some put some work in. Yeah. Uh, Shigari H two O, what's going on? Welcome to the show. Finally, you finally made it down. Yeah, I finally made it. <laughs> First of all, let me let me tell y'all, uh, we. So girl, we we call him Scott Shaver sometimes, but we also call him Cheat Code because every time you put him in the game at Balling for Peace, I noticed that about you, Ron. You stack the deck on your side, and you you got Shakari on your team. He doesn't even jump, for, like to to dunk the basketball. That's not fair, bro. It's a reason why your teams keep winning. It's <laughs> not your fault, right? So no, to the, I think the other coach was complaining one year. They were like, "No, you that's not fair." Yeah. Nobody is his height. Like, then yeah, there's we, no matchup. Yeah, we were talking about at the football game, if you was going to play wide receiver out there, I said, you can't just do that, man. Just put it up. Uh, I just wanted to watch at that point. <laughs> exactly. We in the wrong arena at that point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had him on my team, though, too. Yeah, you did. See, you come on, it. man. You got to stop cheating, Snuck man. Hey, man. It's, it's, Imagine um, that. Like, you can't, like, what are you going to do with that? Who's jumping? Like, to, no. like, come on, man. They got some dunkers on the other side and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, they got know. some dunkers, but when you don't have to jump, when you, you don't have to t- <laughs> Me toe. Right. And you like, oh, it's so on. That's a cheat code, man. Come on. I ain't mad at you. Yeah, I was the we same we thing. actually just came from a um game. We were just hooping in uh one of show basketball games just now. So that's where I uh, part in our lateness, you know what I'm saying? We was Not so from, good. Uh, out here, out there and Y'all gotta get ready for the for the game. Yeah, yeah. You got, first you know, is going down. Right, yeah. What? Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of, right, you talked about the, the dunkers and the high flies. How many times that happen? You're on the court and you can see the guy try to size you up like he's going to try to yam oh, you. Oh, it happened all the time. <laughs> but that's the thing. My, my, my forearm is undefeated. <laughs> <laughs> when you come down that lane, look, check this out. You can try, right. but yeah. it, this ain't going to wind up well for you. Yeah. Yeah. Like, he got you know, that old Charles Oakley uh, style right. of basketball. I'm not, I'm not just about to let you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, if post, you get it off, yeah. you get it off. Fine. Yeah. Cool. No problem. Catch me slipping, okay, fine. You call me slipping, but you just straight up, me and you jumping in the nah. air. Nah, that's quiet. It's, it's over. Okay. <laughs> that's the type of attitude I like. Yeah, you know what I mean? that's, so, that's and, what I be saying. And you yeah. might have to visit the dentist after. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Hit you with that phone. Gotta get it's you over. Right. It's I'm, over. Not, I'm not about to just let you dunk on me, but if right. you get it off, you get it off. All right, cool, fine. Right. Everybody, I'm saying, happen to everybody. That's crazy. Now, yeah. all right, is there anybody? Because we got a couple of uh, ball, NBA balls that's coming. Is there anybody that you looking to block specifically? No, not specifically. I'm just trying to have a everybody, good time. Black, everybody. I told, I told, I told H man, I need, I need a couple ISOs too, man. I need some oh ISOs. yeah, he gonna be. Oh, you know what? I need to pat that thing a little bit. I mean, get some ISOs. Bring it up the court like Dirk in the All Star game that time. Bring it up the court. Right, I need some clear ups. Right. Yes, sir. All right, hold it. That we, we, oh man, this, this is going to be great. Born for peace, yeah. Ron. You've added. I feel like every day you have five new celebrities. <laughs> There's gonna be more celebrities than people at, the, at, Yo, at some it's, point. It's, it's um, it's gonna be a lot, a lot going on. You know what it is? Is I, I don't want to leave anybody out. So I love everybody. So when people, yeah. when Aww. people are, are hitting me up to to come out and, and support this event. In any way, so I'm like, okay, yeah, you can be uh, assistant coach as well. Yeah. Like, you can, yeah, yeah, you can job. be uh, the player. You can <laughs> be the shooting coach. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You know, you can be the uh, the, the water boy. You know right. what I'm saying? But like at the end of the day, it's about involvement and and, and yeah. being year five and, and getting this reaction. Like you know, the first couple years, the first year I had I had to have two um, celebrity games. If you remember, yeah. we had two of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But wow. we didn't have the youth game. We didn't have the, the slam dunk contest. We didn't have the three-point shootout that we'll have this, this year, year that I wanted to implement last year, but you was trying to just say, yo, just do the dunk contest. Yeah, we got to so. get a feel yeah. for it. Make sure everything yeah. is smooth right. first. And you're then right. You're right. So we did it. That, that's a fact. And, and that uh, actually uh, 
you know, drove the 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 event to be even you know more uh, yeah. you know bigger because yeah. you know we got some of the best dunkers in the world for this one. So yeah. Max got his uh, his competition cut he out. He does. For I'm talking like guys is flying in from the West Coast. For the West like, Utah. Uh, they seen the dunk contest last year. They said they wanted in, mm -hmm. and guys is coming from all over the country. Yo, wow. Max. You know you family. Yeah, I'm letting definitely. you know right now. You Listen, better be Max on your A game. Because yeah, yeah. these cats is coming for y'all. And we done went. So a couple of cats already, <laughs> you know, spoke to them. So, you know, these cats is coming, Max. So you, you better be on it, man. And, and we really have a, a real uh, judging system this year that will be a lot better than, you know, last year. Just, you know, we was kind of, like, excited. People were just excited throwing them. Yeah. Up. So we're going to have, like, you know, you guys. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was, I'm just being real. No, 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 no. Was, Everybody's trying to judge. Everybody's trying to judge. So we have. We have our real judges, like, yeah. you know what I mean? We'll have our five real judges, and then we'll have, like, you know, people in the crowd, they can throw up numbers all they want. We'll, we'll yeah. have some numbers made up for them and stuff like that. I think you guys are handling that side of yeah. it. <laughs> no, it, it's going to be, it's going to be lit. And first of all, the fact that, all right, so. We got Eric Barkley coming. We got, we got Eric Barkley <laughs> wow. coming out as a guest judge, uh -huh. Scoop B as a guest judge, mm -hmm. and Hot Sauce, Hot Sauce as a guest, guest judge. Yep. It don't get no better than That's that, man. Yeah. yeah. You know and what I'm saying? How does it feel for you just seeing the growth of every, like all of this? Um, it feels good. It, it, um, we was just talking about that in the car, as a matter of fact, on the way here. That's a fact. You know, we spoke about that first game at Baruch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When we, I told him it was looking like a pro city game in there. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. it was packed like, yeah. to, the, to the masses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But then he explained, you know, the, diff the difficulties he was having in regards to the social media. And I was like, all right, cool. But yeah. that was like that one. Yeah, and holds a special place. I'm like, man, that's the that's the birth of it. And, you know what and, I mean? and people, what people don't know is, um, you know, we we've been on the road, we travel and stuff like that. Me and Gary talk a lot. Like a lot of people that I rock with, I, you know, I, you'll see them around more. Yeah, yeah. You'll see people there at the first one and. Still there is still number five. Right. So, like, we've had conversations. Before I even started Bowling for Peace, me and him, I had conversations with him and ideas of what I wanted to do and my vision. It just so happened that the name Bowling for Peace came yeah. and attached to it. You know, mm -hmm. I had different names that I wanted to call and stuff. So, you know, even uh, there are other things that are called Bowling for Peace. But at the end of the day, is this uh, is trademark, Bowling for Peace. And yeah. it doesn't matter what the name is. You yeah. know what I mean? We're bringing, uh, we're combining sports and unity together so mm -hmm. you know what i mean and the message is peace through sports but um that's a conversation that i've had for we've had a long time you know oh, what i'm yeah. saying so and that's why i i actually I, I told him how it would work too yeah. yeah and having them out there at the games and how it you know it, it would bring a lot more attention to what we're doing and no, and um, <laughs> it's dope man and, you right. know he's one of the stables of bowling for peace yeah. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. you can't have bowling for peace without uh the cheat code yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah he asked me every year the same question yo gar are you playing yo gar are you playing <laughs> I'm like, and sometimes I give him a hard time. Yeah. I don't know. Age, <laughs> I don't know if I can do it this year, yeah, man. Yeah, right. And then he show up. So the one I miss, he, he saw me the next day. He's like, yo, you ain't even come, yo. I'm like, so <laughs> to, yo, my bad, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yo, know, it's it's all love, you know what I'm saying? And, um, we, you know, we're we going to have a uniform that fits him this year, too. You know what I mean? Custom made <laughs> oh, uniform. Right. Names on the back. He said, right. Yeah, right. yeah, no, yeah. I, I told him about that the last yeah, time. Yeah. He had me out there looking crazy. Yeah. I'm like, yo, these shorts, man. That was a major negotiating point right there. It was a negotiation point. Like, you want to have to have a I'm going to need these shorts. Facts, facts. I'm going to leave them below the knee. So we had the official, you know, jersey with the names in the back. Shout out to Wooter Apparel. You know what I mean? We we came up with... uh. We, we d redesigned some real nice uniforms. Shout out to my designer, Tommy. He doesn't get enough uh, 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 love and support, but shout out to him. Mm -hmm. We actually, um, he's the one who designed everything from my yeah. H2O basketball logo to the Bowling for Peace, okay. H2O music logo, wow. every single logo, every my website, everything he has done, but he don't like to be on camera. He don't even like the media to, to retweet them in anything. So like, <laughs> but shout out to him, um, you know what I mean, for oh, making, you know, the visuals look so dope, you know what I mean? Yeah. And the, the, the individual flyers that we, he creates every single thing mm -hmm. that I have. So shout out to him. I want to give him some love and, and, and support, you know what I mean? Awesome. Those guys, the behind the scenes guys is important, man. Those are the guys that, that keep the wheels running. Yeah. That's a fact. And you, I call you. Every, my man Trip always pick up the phone, you know what yeah, I'm saying? I hit him up for anything. Like, real talk. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? He been rolling with me before Ball yeah. for Peace, when I was in my Queens Week days and stuff, yeah. when I was doing. That's because we got a lot more work to do. We ain't finished That's yet. a fact. <laughs> a lot of work. That's, That's the definition of a day one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Down. So when people see, yeah. again, it goes back to the same people around me. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm coming up 
with the people that I rock with, you know what I mean? Day zero people, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like, at the end of the day, when we all come up, and I do have some big news that I'm gonna release at Ballin' for Peace too, about par partnerships that, um, that actually went through that mm -hmm. was gonna take this to a whole nother level too, you know what I'm saying? So uh, stay tuned for that. This will probably be the last year that it's like, you know, um, where I have to just be so hands on, you know what With I mean? Everything. Yeah. <laughs> let me, you know? let me so. ask you, when you were speaking about uh, the people you are working with or people that started from the beginning, mm -hmm. is it hard using kind of like discernment when you're getting so many new people that want to be involved, but still maintaining like the <laughs> core of this is what I started and why, and this is maintaining like my image of it? Is it hard kind of bringing new people in? Uh, it definitely is trying to uh, bring new people in, but I'm like, I told, we just literally had a conversation about Put, giving people opportunity so like I've, I've given people opportunity and chances before like you yeah. know what I'm saying but they, they either they don't come through mm -hmm. or they just like you know just think that you have it like because they see what I do they see how hard like say if I say hey uh, I, I need you to do a certain thing for me for Bowling for Peace mm -hmm. you're like you'll probably see it and like you do it anyway, so why would you need me? So, like, you'll go right. and you won't go as hard. Right. Or you won't go as hard as if it's your own event. Mm, yeah. So, like, you're not going to put that 100% into yep. Balling for Peace. So then it's like, I'm hitting you up, like, hey, did you... Oh, man, I had... So I do it myself. So true. So that's what happens. Though. I do it with people that already I know is going to do yeah. it. It's, I just spoke about it's hard to get new people to buy into your dream. Mm -hmm. So you have to get people who are manifesting in their own role that will help your dream. That's a fact. That's that's the way only way around so, it. So I try to make people yeah. I try to make people who are, are doing things that I see them do great. I try to have them do exactly that. But for well, for a ball of yep. peace. So like it's a great answer. Uh, yeah. you know, shout out to all those people that are rocking with me. Shout out to Tay. Shout out to uh Siani who's uh, actually been doing the social media stuff and actually mm -hmm. we had a uh, IG live with Scott Machado today. Uh, nice. On Balling for Peace, we did one with Derek Jones from the New York Jets, and um, that's just something that new that we're trying to implement. And I'm trying to like, you know, drive more people to to the actual page. It's like it's too much for me to run. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I haven't really ran the page for a little while, but I wanted to give it to someone, and she's doing an amazing job with that, and a lot of the behind the scenes stuff with the development of the uh, of Balling for Peace. Uh, goes out to 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 Ashante as well. She's been doing all that stuff, getting everything uh, together, the agendas and all that other stuff that you know people don't really think about when you have uh, an event going on like That's this. That's awesome. It's going down at St. Francis College. Uh, if you guys haven't already, make sure you get those tickets. This is going to be the event of the year, mm -hmm. and you do not want to miss it. There's going to be a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. All of your Big favorite time. people is going to be there. We going to be there. You guys better, y'all better just start playing and get those tickets right now. And it's in Brooklyn. I mean, come on. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to bring it in Brooklyn. You know, I had the football game in Brooklyn, and um, I had the, the basketball, this year, the basketball game at St. Francis College. Shout out mm -hmm. to my boy over there at St. Francis College. I'm going to release his name after I do the event. Because <laughs> you know what happens a lot of times, even when I say, oh, yeah, I'm doing it here, then I get people calling me, hey, can I, how do you, who connected? I'm right. like, yo, let me. Rock out first. <laughs> That's so annoying. Right. Yeah. Let me, yeah. let me rock yeah. out first. At least. Let me get the event? You know, let me have my yeah. event. And then, you know, I got you. I promise you. Like, mm. I'll put you on with it. But let me have my event first. <laughs> let me do it. Let me kill it first. And then, yeah. like, you know, I, here, here. Here it is. But, um, you know, um, I, I'm... I also recently we linked up with the Benefit Games, who do uh, all the New York Knicks and New York Rangers uh, mm -hmm. charity events. So players who are playing in the game this year, they all have their own personal donation links and stuff, and that's going to mm -hmm. help the cause a lot this year. Because other than them coming out and saying, "Hey, I have 20 people with me," yeah, my whole entourage can it, you know, like now the entourage can actually help and benefit. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. and help the, the, the cause of Balling for Peace, you know, and helps with the NAACP, Guns Down Life for uh, yeah. Life Camp, um, you know, some of the different charities that we're working with, and the H2O Sports Foundation, you know what I mean? So um, my AAU team, I got them in eight different leagues and tournaments, and we need funds, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, wow. So, um, you know, shout out to them. They just played in um, the Under Armour uh, tournament this past weekend while I was in L.A., um, and they did a pretty good job, you know what I mean? So um, shout out to that. We got a game tomorrow as well, so yeah. Now, are you are you ready though? Are you ready? Because you know you can't disappoint. 
I'm I'm ready to hoop. I'm ready to play. Right. I mean, I've been playing. You know, I've been um I've been active. I've been more active playing wise than I have in the last couple years. As far as well, year two, I I was hooping like damn that every I was about day. To say, yeah, there's been times yet because you're yeah. so hands on, you haven't gotten a chance to really play. Play, yeah. yeah. So year two, I made it a point when we was at York College. I made it a point to. To show out, like you know, what that I'm saying? was the, the, you had you had like sixty points. Yeah, so and, I was yeah. I was blacking out, I was wild, and um, but because yeah, one, I maybe had two points, bro. Yeah, like I literally um, I literally um, played no basketball. I didn't know how to promote an event like this yeah. my first year. And I mean, I did a good kind job. Learn how to balance. Yeah, to balance some rec time in yeah. and. It's a, to do it's a lot. It's a lot. So I was going to parties. <laughs> I'm gonna think getting shadows by DJs and all that. Like I didn't know my first year, you know, and I was just linking with a lot of promoters. Mm -hmm. And as far as like, you know, I took the 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 high school uh, route and the college route. Like I, I didn't yeah. really know like um, the impact that I could have, but it, it turned out beautifully. But I, it's two different directions. Um, um, you know, it's still the same message, but it was totally like the crowd that i was yeah. trying to get you know yeah, like yeah, now i have target, yeah. yeah now i have more like um youth organizations coming mm -hmm. out with the kids and different things of that nature so like um uh you know shout out to them shout out to mm -hmm. uh you know who else uh new york edge they're gonna have some groups coming out this year as well too harlem children's own um so that's yeah. really important with any brand to know your audience. I think yeah. that's something that people don't. You got a huge following, but it's like people who aren't interested in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So to make that transition to get the right audience to support your, you know, your end goals. That's smart. a fact. That's a yeah. fact. I don't, and I don't, you know, it's, it's people who have millions of followers who they just don't have a direction though. So yeah. like they'll do some things, but they don't really know what they're even doing it for. Like it's not a real purpose. Like, you know, everybody has their way of giving back and mines is through sports, right? Mm -hmm. So mines is through basketball, through uh, flag football, through uh, yeah. bowling, like, you know what I mean? So like, peace through sports. So I think that, um, you know, that's that's my way of giving back. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has what they want to do to give yeah. back. Mm -hmm. And on on the, uh, even even outside of that, you know, I still give back that you, it's not a big event. Like, you know, when yeah. I'm going up to, to, to shelters and giving away stuff, that's nothing. It's not an event, like, you know, but I just... That's part of what you do. That's though, part right? of what I do, like, yeah. really, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have clothes in, in the back of my trunk, like, just to, if I see somebody who needs it, yeah, I don't go on a gram, like, you know what I'm yeah, saying? That's, gonna, that's yeah, real, like, that. you know, real life stuff. It like, if I have people, like, well, that's, that all you know? Time. Yeah, that's the thing, because people, you know... I don't mind here and there to encourage, sorry to cut you off, to encourage other people to <laughs> do it. But I got some people that I don't follow anymore, but it's like, it's, hey, I'm getting to the homeless. Wack. Hey, I'm doing it. Yeah. Hey, and it's like, just do it. Just be blessed. Just do it. Like the on, I did it and it's on and, and how it happened, I think I was over here, I had in a meeting and um I had some clothes in my in my trunk that I was gonna drop off to a uh to uh, some sneakers, drop off to one of those bins, right? Okay. And I had them like Big piles of clothes, like in the, my back seat, and I uh, met with my boy. Uh, he was like, he was around. I went, I was over at Junior's, and um, the, 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 man, I forget his name, but he the, he was doing my photography. Painfully gifted, he was okay. doing. So he's like, yo, um, so he's like, I, I was saying I'll drop him off, but I had my clothes and the what's the name in the back for stuff that I was giving away and sneakers, yeah. and um, he lived like a little bit down the block, and he's like, yo, I got my stuff. Maybe you should, you know, just give them away and. I'm like, yo, I don't really like to do that. But he's like, yo, just do it. So the clips that you see of me actually giving my sneakers in a way yeah. happened organically just like that. And yeah. um, he's like, yo, people need to see what you do. Because mm -hmm. people just think that, you know, balling for peace, that's the only time you're doing right. anything, you giving back, yeah. which is false. My whole life, literally, I'm, I'm training, coaching kids and mentoring these kids throughout the whole year. Like, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, I even, I, I substitute teach in the DOE. So I'm around kids and giving back to them my entire life like you know yeah. what i'm saying so and but it, people don't see that it sucks though awesome. and because sometimes you you kind of have to sh show that work you know what I'm saying? It, sh it shouldn't be that way because we're supposed to just right. do it from the heart mm -hmm. but you know people people when they they it's like they have to see it yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. it's one thing you know that you're doing it but they want to see that you're doing it and then outside of oh well he just throws the basketball game and mm -hmm. that's it <laughs> and they don't know that no uh He's actually out here working with these kids. He's mm -hmm. actually doing yeah. these giveaways. He's doing this. He's doing that. And they don't get to see all of that. 
So, you know, sometimes it's good to just listen. Yeah, I'm out here. I'm actually out here for real doing this and helping my community and and helping these kids and giving them different opportunities, you know, that they may not have had if they didn't come in contact with an H2O Mm -hmm. or, you know. And sometimes so by, by people you. being able to see you do it, it inspires them to do it as well. Mm-hmm. Facts. You know what I'm That's saying? That's a fact. So I aspire to inspire, but I mm. just don't copy. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Ooh, well, you always like get that. that. That's a... It, 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 real talk, I aspire oh, to inspire others, right? But well, just don't copy. I'm, I'm glad you said that. Literally what I'm doing. <laughs> like, it's kind of corny. <laughs> no, no, I'm glad you said that. Because I like that. Yeah. We've had the talk off air before. Yeah. Um, for the people that don't know, you're very humble, what you do. But there have been some other clones with the basketball game, mm-hmm. with the flag football mm-hmm. game. Like, you, we, we're not going to name names, yeah. but, we, but I've seen it just like I'm sure you've seen it as well. But listen, yeah. always remember, they can find the recipe, but the sauce will not taste the same. That's a fact. Well, uh, uh, smack, big you mama can't, make co- it? Yeah, you so can't so copy so respect. So and you that, can't. I, I actually, when I, we're going to ask He's Smack. I've been <laughs> trying to get at, No, no, I'm serious. I've been trying to get with Smack. I've been trying to get at him to, to have a sit-down conversation with him. I haven't been able to talk to him in quite some time. But um, I want to have a sit down with him because, you know, he has King of the Dot. He has um, that these other leagues that are RBE and all these. Because yeah. I'm a big battle fan. And that's why you see a lot of, like, Low Deluxe, he's going to be back again this year as well, yeah. too. I just got off the phone with him today. Um, his car, he's going to be out there and doing some special things. And, you know, he had that battle the following week in Houston. Yeah. So I'm going to pull up out there, too, to go support him. Nice. But um, at the end of the day, like, I want to talk to Smack about how to uh deal with certain things you know what i mean because i don't want to take it out i don't i don't really care about what else somebody else is doing half the time i don't even see it like you know what i mean but at the end of the day um don't ask for something and then like you know and then don't and then you get my blessings and then like you know what i'm saying like it's it's kind of weird you know don't even acknowledge or whatever or even just literally like try to hold blueprint type stuff and it's just like all right, cool. Like, you know, but, you know, I don't really care. It Listen, is what it is. But we commend you and we respect what you're doing. We know. <laughs> exactly. At the end of the day, June 1st is going down, Balling for Peace, St. Francis College. We are in the building. Shout out to, to everybody that's helping out with the dunk contest as well. Sneaker Ball. Yes, sir. The Rosado Firm. Shout out to H2O and yeah. Shigari for coming through. For myself, Trip Young, Legend of Two Games, Ember Marie. Yeah, we out. Yo, June 1st, Ballin' for June Peace, first. man. We Pull here. Up. St. Yeah. Francis College. Get your tickets. Ballin'forpeace.org. Yeah. Sean, you a fool. I'm a superior yeah, Sean me. is wild, yo. Higher expectations. Young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. Uh-huh, and if uh-huh. your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, <laughs> gossip, all the hot topics. Hey, hey. Real fans, real talk.com got it. Uh-huh. They got the hottest bloggers. Is Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. Uh-huh. I'm talking about the latest. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about the greatest. Yeah, yeah. Go check out the archives. Even tell a neighbor. Tell them about from spring to winter, tuning in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com.